Joey Davis. Joey, first off, congratulations, man. How you doing? I'm doing good, Zeb. Doing good. Happy, overwhelmed, and just uh, just chilling. Just chilling at school, man. That's all. Okay, we're uh, we're not even. Geez, what are we? A little over 48 hours yeah. off of your fourth national title, undefeated. Ultimately, in my opinion, probably going to go down history as the greatest Division II wrestler of all time, or in the conversation, you know, with your Carlton Hassel rigs. Hey, hey. Some pretty good guys. <laughs> yes, yes. But looking at the experience, you know, you know, you guys, Notre Dame College, your champs, your sophomore year, uh -huh. this past year, your runner up as a senior, mm -hmm. as a team, and you know, you go, uh, was it 132 and 0? Or whatever the record. <laughs> <laughs> looking oh, at the experience, yeah. though, okay. you know, everyone. Ah, you know, Joey Davis should have gone D1. Talk about your experience here at Notre Dame College. Coming here and leading them to a, a team title. Runner-up finish. Undefeated career. What's it been like? It's been an a, a incredible journey for me at, at Notre Dame College. Uh, I remember you coming here my freshman and sophomore year. I'm looking at the tapes, how older I've gotten and I became and stuff like that. But it's been a, an incredible journey for me and the team at Notre Dame because just the fact that a lot, a lot, a lot has been going on. You know, we've been getting top-notch recruits. You know, I've been, I got a chance to go to the OTC and learn different stuff and that I never thought I'd be able to do. Um, I, I won history uh, at Notre Dame College, you know, coming away from California and things like that. So a lot of, a lot has been going on and um, uh, more things have been going on, just building, you know, more of a friendship with my coaches and a family with my team. I feel like me and my team is just like, really like all brothers. We, we, we do a lot together. We do uh, extremely a lot together. And uh, it's, been a, it's been an incredible journey here at Notre Dame College for me. I look at it, and, you know, every time I come here, um, you're kicking the tar out of all your teammates. I'd be pretty mad if I had to be one of your teammates. But you seem like you really enjoy wrestling. Mm -hmm. How much do you love wrestling? You know, we're going to talk about football. And I know football, you're, you're a, you know, extremely talented football player. Mm -hmm. But you came and you made history in wrestling. How much do you love wrestling and enjoy it? It was, I love wrestling a lot. Uh, it was something I couldn't quit. I have no idea why, you know, but uh, somebody told me, one of my mentors said, you know, football is something you like to play. Football, wrestling is something you love to do. And uh, once he put that in my head, I was just like, you know what, he's right, he's right, man, because I couldn't quit wrestling. I, I, I don't know why, you know, I had all the accolades in football. I was fast, I was strong, I was... You know, growing up with Snoop Dogg, you know, and uh, a lot of colleges look at me football, like, you know, everybody, like I said before, but uh, wrestling was just something I could not just quit, and especially because I was just so good at it. I, I liked to grapple while I was a tough kid and stuff like that, and uh, it was just something I couldn't quit. I just couldn't let it go, and um, I'm glad I didn't because, you know, I, I made history in something that uh, I love to do. So, yeah. Look, looking at, you know, your relationship with Snoop Dogg, he was your youth football coach. Yeah. How many years did he coach you? He cost me about six years. So six I years? I played against him, too, for two years. I've been knowing Snoop about, you know, eight. It was a good eight years I've known Snoop. I, I, I played against him before I, I met him, and that's how he got to you know, notarize me and stuff like that. And he he beat me. He beat my team that year. He beat my, my team twice, actually, in the playoffs. But uh, that's how I met Snoop and things like that. But, uh, yeah, he was my coach and a great guy, like I said. And I probably wouldn't be the man I am today if it wasn't for Coach Snoop because – just the simple things I've seen. I've seen the things he's done with himself, and I've seen the things he's done with the kids, and how he gave it back to the kids, and just to have him. When, when he was coaching me, I, I didn't even really know. Never listened to his music really. Obviously, I heard the songs that were out and stuff like that. But now how I am now listening to albums and things like that, and just to say it goes back, and I can say that Snoop Dogg is my coach. It just gives me a whole different output, and the other people look at me different. Like man, Snoop Dogg's your coach, and I, I used to be like, yeah, yeah, because. People, I guess people don't know. I didn't know how big Snoop Dogg was when I was younger, but now I understand uh, the process of me, what what happened with that, and it was just incredible and just changed me as a person and for what I want to do for the youth, especially where I come from and things like that. So all, all glory to Coach Snoop. You know? Looking at, you know, the nickname. <laughs> did he give you the nickname when you were in competition or did he give you the nickname when he was your coach? He gave me the nickname when I was in competition with him. because Really? He, yeah, he gave me because he seen me, I guess, and uh, I was nike out, swagged out, so I guess he just came to call me Iceman. And uh, on the football field, I was very shifty. I would say I was very uh, agile. And Slippery? Icy? Icy. <laughs> <laughs> but I was very agile and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, he, got, he has a lot of nicknames for all, all his football players. Uh, if you play on his team or if he's a fan of you, he has a, he, he has all kind of nicknames. A funny guy, so 
he gave me the name Iceman, and um, it just stuck with me. Maybe because I move my feet well in wrestling or whatever they they like it in wrestling too. So I'm gonna just stick with it for however long it takes me for what I'm doing my career. Yeah. Looking at you know the potential for football, is there the potential for football? It's four plus one in, in, in NCA. I think you can do it in Division three, two, and one. Mm -hmm. um, your Division two. Is is football on the radar? Is a possible? Is it a possibility here at Notre Dame College? I give you this answer, Zeb. It's talks about it. You know, it's very much talks about it. I want to play football. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like now I'm at the point with me winning my four titles. Like, is my body gonna let me do it? What's, what is my body telling me to do? And I'm a person that's going. My mentors always told me, uh, especially my uncle Tom, man, you gotta listen to your body. You know, I, I know I'm still young and stuff now, but I'd rather listen to my body now. So when I get to that age older, when I'm older, I'll listen to it even more. But uh, football is definitely an option. I'm thinking about playing next year and stuff like that. Just I just need to settle down after this title and really think about what I'm going to do with myself. Ever since these past 48 hours, I've been getting uh, a lot of calls from a lot of great people and friends and family. And it's just overwhelming right now. And I'm just trying to be, I'm just trying to settle down and take it all in and, and uh, keep a big smile on my face and, uh, and just... Keep prayer, keep prayer, and hopefully I lead the right direction. MMA, you know, you're one of the most ultra talented athletic guys I've seen that Tucker Russell. It, it really just it makes sense. Mm -hmm. MMA makes sense to me for you. I'm not you though. Mm -hmm. Is MMA, you know, there's just so many different forks in the road for you, Joey. Yeah. Is MMA something that's on the radar? Here's the thing with MMA, Zeb. It's like I am going to do MMA. I just don't know when I'm going to do it. Uh, I'll say that. Uh, my uncle Antonio McKee's been putting his uh his mental his his he been putting his gifts into me since I was five years old and I've been in I've been I'm five and oh as an amateur I've been fighting under his little bitty organization and, and stuff for for quite some time now and um, fighting is an option it's just the fact that I want to get into fighting the right way I probably want to you know build my name up a little bit more and by doing that maybe I don't know what I got to do to build my name up a little bit more and uh you know, hopefully I'll get my degree out the way because I don't want to just get into fighting without my degree. I want to do it. I want to do everything the right way before I get into fighting and just take my time because you only live once. And I feel like I have no rush to do it. I'm 22 years old and I'm going to just take my time, graduate, talk to my mentors, see what they want to do and um, and then go from there. But fighting is definitely an option. I've been doing it so long. I'm, I'm pretty good at it. And I'm not just a wrestler when it comes to the ring. You know, I probably won't even use my wrestling anymore when I get in the ring. You know, I, I want to use my hands. But my uncle don't like me saying that. He doesn't want me take, taking away what I'm good at. But, you know, I like to fight. And um, shout out to my cousin AJ. He's doing big things at Bellator. And um, I'm looking, I'm going to follow his footsteps when he get in there. And like Aaron Pico as well. And hopefully we all come in there and shake the world just as wrestlers. And especially the young generation because, you know, it's the generation that's been training. It's kids who've been looking at like Anderson Silva's and all the top fighters in the world. And they just want to be just like them now. And that's scary. Because when you got people who just wants to be like those top fighters, it's gonna make it's gonna make the place the fight organization that much better, I think. So fighting is definitely an option. I just don't want to rush into it because it's it's no it's it's no rush to get into the octagon. I don't think that's just my personal opinion about the fight game because I feel like a lot of people rush in there and then they're in there and they gotta go against the world's best competition and they're not ready, you know, or they're they're trying to rush into fights because they don't have the money or they're trying to do everything, you know. It, it probably was best in their interest, but for me, I feel like me going in there with the right head, no rush, and feel like I took my time and, and things like that, that's that's what I want to do. Okay, the degree. You talk about the degree. Yeah. Ultimately, getting the education. That was what this was all about. All about. You came here, you know, you come to Notre Dame College, they were able to give you the accommodations you needed, you know, to stay eligible mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, be out on the mat, mm -hmm. accomplish your goals as an athlete. Tell me about you know how much that focus now is shifting from. You got the fourth national title. How much of the focus is now on getting the degree here? That's not, that's full focus now, and I feel and I could do it with a smile on my face now. I could say I left wrestling undefeated, no losses, barely got taken down. So now I'm I'm happy. Before I should I couldn't think in class. I'm always like, man, next week I got this, next week I got that. Now I could just sit back and say, hey, I done my job in wrestling, dad. Now I could just focus on school and graduate with a smile on my face and go to class happy. I don't got to go to class like, man, I got to do this, do that. So full force graduation, full force on the schoolwork now. And um, that's that's what I came to do, be a regular student for once. <laughs> I don't got to worry about practice or cutting weight or anything. Just go to class like everybody else now and um, see how this works. Your dad's 2,500 miles away. He's a huge part of your life. Yes. I talk to your dad a lot on the phone. 
how huge has your dad been as far as being an influence in your life? Making sure you know you went to you you didn't go you went to Santa Fe High School. Mm -hmm. You didn't go to the high school that you normally would have gone to, right? <laughs> to be honest, Coach, yeah, I didn't know what high school I was gonna go to. I was in the same position in college, but uh, I'm glad high. Yeah, but my my dad found Santa Fe High School. We had friends and stuff went to the high school, and I was in the city of Compton. You know, wrestling, doing going to regular little elementary schools in there, but they didn't have wrestling at the Compton High School. So I couldn't go to Compton High School when my dad was coaching that because they didn't have wrestling no more. They ended up dropping the program and stuff like that. So I had to find another high school. And I, I had to find a high school that, that was decent in football and decent enough for wrestling and, and with the coaches. And Santa Fe was just the perfect one to go to for me, you know, and uh, it worked out, yeah. But uh, to go back to your question, my dad, uh, if it wasn't for my dad, uh, I don't even know where I'd be in my life, you know, personally, because like I said, where I've grown up, man, I my house got shot up. I don't even tell a lot of people that. I've been through a lot, you know, house being shot up, being shot at, being guns pulled out on me is all real talk. You know, I, I don't say it a lot because I'm just not that type of person, but I've been through a lot in my life and I just took that into the sport of wrestling and it just, wrestling just made, helped me so far in my life and, um, and my dad did a great job of you know, telling me when not to go outside, when he letting me go outside, what type of friends I was hanging out with, because I could have easily went to the wrong di direction with my friends. And not saying that I still don't hang out with the wrong type of friends, because where I come from, that's just who I got to hang out with. I've been with them since day one, and it's just hard to let them go. But all my friends back home look at me as role models, and I got to take that into consideration of being a better person and trying to help them out and mental-wise to help them go the right way, too. Because a lot of times they just think what they're doing is the right way or, you know, but I try to be the best role model as I can. And my dad told me be, always told me, name me after Malcolm X, always told me to be a leader. And um, I always try to help people, help get get led in the right way. So without my father, man, and it wouldn't, none of this would be possible.